सहनो सहनो भुनक्तो सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुमाषावै ओ शाषा कल्याण सुंदर राम कारुण्य जान के राम कल्याण सुंदर राम कारुण्य जान के राम पीतांबर धर राम भय भीति विभंजन राम पीतांबर धर राम भय भीति विभंजन राम दशावतारा राम दश मुख मर्दन राम दशावतारा राम दश मुख मर्दन राम भक्त सुधाम राम भक्त प्रियंकर राम भक्त सुधाम राम भक्त प्रियंकर राम कारुण्य जान के राम कल्याण सुंदर राम कारुण्य जान के राम पीतांबर धर राम
भयभीति विभंजन राम भय भीति विभंजन राम Chant from forty-five. Swe swe karmanya bhirata ha, samsedhim labhate nara ha, swakarmani rata sedhim yatha vindati tachruno yataf pravrtir bhuta nam. ये न सर्वमिदं ततं स्वकर्मणातम भ्यर्च्य सिद्धिम विंदति मानवः श्रेयान स्वधर्मो विगुणः परधर्मात स्वनुष्ठितात स्वभावनियतं कर्म कुर्वन्नाप्नोति किल्बिशं सहजम कर्म कौंते सदोषम त्यजे सर्वारंभा दोषेण असक्त बुद्धि सर्वत्र जितात्मा विगत स्पृह 
नैष्कर्म्य सिद्धि परमा सन्यासेनाधिगछति सिद्धि प्राप्त यथा ब्रह्म तथाति निबोध मे सेन कौंतेय निष्ठाज्ञान से यापरा बुद्ध्या विशुद्धया युक्त धृत्यात्मानम्य शब्दादीन विषयान्त्यक्वा रागद्वेशुदस् विवीक्तसेवी लघ्वाशी यतवाकायमस वैराग्यम समुपाश्रिता अहंकार बल दर्प काम क्रोधम परिग्रह विमुच्य निर्मम शात ब्रह्म भूयाय कलते ब्रह्म भूत प्रसन्नात्मा न शोचति न कांक्षति समसु भूतेषु मद्भक्ति लभते परा भक्त मिजाती यावान्यस्मत तथ ज्ञा विशते तदन So yesterday we were seeing the nivritti marga, that state of higher meditation, the state of knowledge. So here, what is the qualification? The qualification is a pure mind, a disciplined mind. obedient mind a mind which is free from all vasanas tendencies likes and dislikes such a pure mind is necessary for higher meditation how to gain that mind that mind is gained through karma yoga performance of one's duties as a worship of the lord taking care of the six factors what are the six factors jnanam karma karta dhruti buddhi and sukham hmm. right so all these topics we have in detail discussed so with such attitude taking care of all factors in this karma yoga when actions are performed mind becomes fit such a person is fit for the higher meditation so what is he supposed to do at the seat of meditation so 51 onwards the description comes buddhya vishuddhaya yukta he has a vishuddha buddhi a pure mind so what is he supposed to do at the seat of meditation his job is only one dhyana yoga parah nityam this is the one thing he has to do dhyana yoga parah what is dhyana yoga parah dhyana means contemplation upon the self meditation upon the self thinking about the nature of the self this is called as dhyana the second term is yoga what is yoga concentration upon the self paying attention to the self focusing your attention upon the self that is called as yoga so you must know the nature of the self you must have a clear understanding about the self how do you get clear understanding about the self shravanam is the way listening to the scriptures 
So, what is this Jnana Yoga Sadhana? Shravanam, Mananam and Nidityasanam. Listening to the scriptures, Shravanam and then gaining a clear understanding of what the Self is. The Self is Satchit Ananda Surupa of the nature of existence, consciousness, bliss. Then after listening to the scriptures, what do you do? You do mananam, you do reflection. Hmm. What is the purpose of reflection? Mananena samshaya nivrittihi. When you do reflection, all the doubts are cleared. The purpose of reflection is removal of doubts. Shravanena atnyana nivrittihi. Ignorance is gone with listening to the scriptures. Mananena samshaya nivrittihi. So, Shravanam gives you information. Mananam makes it, what you call, conviction. It gives you conviction. Doubtless knowledge is called conviction. And then the third one is Nididhyasanam. What is Nididhyasanam? Actually paying no, focusing upon the self, identifying with the self, becoming one with the self. It's called as Abhyasam. Right. So, what is the knowledge of the scripture? I am not the body, I am consciousness. This is the knowledge. So, now identifying with consciousness, that practice is called as Nididhyasanam. So, what should be the end result of Nididhyasanam? So, Nididhyasanena vasana nivrittihi viparita bhavana nivrittihi So, what is the result of this? The result is a clear experiential knowledge that I am not the body, I am consciousness. Today, we are all identified with the body. So, we think I am the body. What is it? It is just a wrong notion in the mind. How to remove wrong notion? A notion is a thought. Now this wrong notion has become very deep rooted because of constant habitual entertaining of these thoughts. Any thoughts when you constantly entertain becomes a habit, becomes deep rooted. So deep rooted erroneous notion is this identification with the body. I am the body. This thought has become very deep rooted. So now how to remove this thought? By entertaining a counter thought. It is sometimes called as Brahmakara Vritti. You must have heard this term. Brahmakara Vritti. This thought is called I am not the body. I am consciousness. It is not just repeating it is actually feeling, experiencing. At the seat of meditation, you clearly experience consciousness and feeling that it is you. This is me. Aham Brahma Asmi. This consciousness is me. Now this person clearly experiences this consciousness. Why? Because the mind is pure. What happens if we skip Karma Yoga and directly go to Jnana Yoga meditation? You may close your eyes, but you will not be able to experience that pure consciousness with which you can identify. So purification of mind is absolutely essential to perform this meditation. When the mind is pure, you very clearly see this consciousness and upon this consciousness you see these floating thoughts you very clearly see on one side consciousness on the other side thoughts so then what are you supposed to do at the seat of meditation thoughts are there these thoughts are all worldly thoughts thoughts represent the world consciousness represents God now the choice is yours what do you want Generally, when we have attachment to the world, we cannot stop these thoughts, worldly thoughts. These thoughts keep on emerging like the waves in the ocean. 
you are not able to stop because raga is there dvesha is there likes and dislikes are there when too much of likes and dislikes are there you will never be able to control these thoughts these thoughts will keep on coming this is called as a vikshepa wandering of the mind now as far as this devotee is concerned he has come out of all that to a great extent hmm. not 100 percent but to a great extent so now this person has done shravanam mananam nididhyasanam at the seat of meditation he sees that consciousness and he knows the glory of that consciousness what is the glory the glory is that this consciousness is the only reality of this world it is the very support of this world it is none other than god himself so he knows that glory of consciousness now he is shifting his attention from the thoughts so in order to withdraw the attention from the thoughts what is the most important thing vairagyam samupashritah vairagyam is what is needed dispassion towards the world if i am attached towards the world then i will not be able to withdraw the mind from the world the mind will be stuck in the world either through raga or through dvesha right kama krodha lobha moha madamatsarya kama desire krodha anger lobha greed moha delusion or even attachment mother arrogance masterya jealousy what is this it is nothing but giving too much importance to the world giving reality to the world and giving too much importance to the world this is it when you give reality to the world and importance to the world the mind will go towards the world but this devotee he very clearly knows that the world has no existence it is existent existing in consciousness consciousness alone is a sat vastu the existing thing the world has only a borrowed existence it borrows its existence from this consciousness so therefore very easily he is able to withdraw the mind from all these thoughts he stops paying attention to these thoughts where is his attention now his attention is upon the consciousness which is observing these thoughts so therefore his attention is upon the observer he gives importance to the observer of the thoughts the witness of the thoughts knowing very well the glory of this witness this drashta so what is the law at the seat in the in meditation if you give importance to thoughts the thoughts will multiply if you just witness the thoughts then the thoughts will die this is the law if you give importance the thoughts will multiply then the mind will keep on wandering so now this person dhyana yoga paraha nityam constantly so there bhagwan shankara chaji rise for nityam he says giving up even chanting of the mantras even chanting of the mantras he has given up that is also distraction meaning what his mind is so pure that he doesn't need any alambanam any support even of chanting of the mantras because he is experiencing that consciousness so clearly that is the kind of purity we have to achieve through karma yoga right so when you shift your attention to this consciousness you start experiencing the properties of consciousness what are the main three properties sat chit and anand you clearly see that this consciousness is the real existing thing intensely you experience the existence principle it is absolute existence it is independent existence it is that existence which never can become non existent it is eternal it is imperishable these things you start experiencing in your own self this is sat 
then chit chit means what consciousness it is awareness it is a light of awareness right it is independent consciousness it is that knowing principle in us what is the nature of this knowing effortless knowing spontaneous knowing instrument free knowing absolute knowing this is the nature of this consciousness sat chit anand so to the extent you abide in the self to the extent you identify with this consciousness you start experiencing a causeless joy bliss satvika sukham hmm? atma buddhi prasadajam earlier it was said hmm? so that when the mind abides in consciousness the joy floods your heart he becomes prasannatma brahma bhuta prasannatma because that is the nature of the self it is this joy which inspires him to do higher sadhana it is this joy which inspires him to give up all the supports of the world vivikta deshi doesn't depend on people for happiness vivikta deshi remains in solitude lagwashi the joy of eating goes away the joy of indulgence goes away why because he has attained a higher joy when you have tasted the higher joy the lower joys of eating and indulgence can be given up lagwashi yata va kayamanasah it is this joy which makes him disciplined at the speech level at the action level at the thought level at the thought level also there is discipline the mind is silent the mind doesn't want to entertain any worldly thoughts now these are all the discipline at the mind level the mind is quiet the mind is cheerfully quiet non complainingly quiet not forcefully quiet it is joyfully quiet because mind wants happiness and it gains that happiness in the self in consciousness so for such a sadhaka sadhana is a joy others may say oh this sadhaka is really struggling really going through lot of effort pain etc another person may say but what is a sadhaka saying this sadhana itself is bliss because the other person is not aware of the joy which this sadhaka is experiencing the other person says he is really suffering in life in poverty in solitude etc etc but what is the experience of sadhaka he is in ocean of bliss nandati 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 eva yasya brahmani ramate chittam brahma bhutah so then this is the sadhana which he will do what sadhana is it it is nididhyasana so constantly training the mind to abide in the self remain in the self focus upon the self and slowly what happens so in the beginning you have to literally pull the mind from the world and fix it in the self in consciousness the effort is there there is effort involved but slowly 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 what happens the mind becomes habituated to abiding in the self and remember every time mind abides in the self the mind becomes silent every time the mind abides in the self mind becomes silent why is the mind silent the mind has achieved the highest joy every time the mind gains happiness it becomes silent right that's what ramana maharshi says manasam tu kim margane krute naiva manasam marga arjavat when you enquire into the nature of the mind what happens to the mind there is no mind mind dissolves 
mind becomes absent when mind becomes absent what remains only consciousness remain will the ahankara remain will the ego remain no because ego is also nothing but a thought it is called as aham vritti so when the mind dissolves every thought dissolves aham vritti is also a thought so the ego also dissolves ahamayam kuto bhavati chinvata aipatatyaham nija vicharanam ಅಹಮಿನಾಶಾಜಹಮಹಂತೀರಸ್ವಯಂಪೂರ್ಣಸೋಟ್ಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಐ ದ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಐ the small i the inferior i gone then what happens ramana maharshi says in its presence the real i shines forth what is real i the pure consciousness parama purna sat so this is called brahma bhutah becoming one with brahman right the individuality is gone the river has merged with the ocean now what remains a river is not there only ocean is there infinite ocean the finite river merges in the infinite ocean now there is no river there is only ocean this is called as brahma bhutah this is the purpose of jnana yoga nivritti marga right so now what will he say earlier in his ignorance he said i am the body now what will he say aham brahma asmi i am consciousness now the question is will he see dreams <laughs> this is some of the questions asked by no seekers will a gnani such a person will he see dream actually there is no reason why you should should dream you should see dream now let us assume he sees dream in the dream also what will he see will he see as the body or as consciousness as consciousness you see once i have redefined my identity in every state that identity remains that's why if i am a man in the waking state in the dream also i continue to be a man because that samskara is deep rooted that i am a man if i am a woman then in the dream also i will find myself as a woman only but now this person has completely wiped out his identity as a man or a woman etc now his identity is consciousness so therefore in whichever state he is he will remain as consciousness by the way mahatmas don't see any dream because because dream is nothing but an expression of unfulfilled desires of the waking so now will this mahatma have any unfulfilled desire in the waking <laughs> no the purpose of all desire is happiness he is reveling in a ocean of happiness so there are no desires there are no vasanas there are no samskaras and therefore he need not see any dream hmm. right so that is why it said prasannatma blissful and what is the expression prasannatma na sochati na kankshati there are no desires there are no sorrows there are no expectations hmm. no expectation no desire whatever is happening is perfect he is reveling in bliss samas sarveshu bhuteshu how does he see others will he have a superiority complex oh i am a gnani i am a realized saint all these fellows they are all bound fellows samsaris will he have this kind of super no you see the glory of this knowledge 
vidya dadati vinayam see the difference between worldly knowledge and spiritual knowledge worldly knowledge makes you bloat with pride i am a great man everybody should bow down to me <laughs> this is what will what the worldly knowledge will make you arrogant proud pompous what about spiritual knowledge you become humble everyone they are like me only we are all one in no way i am divine or etc if i am divine then everybody is divine in no way they are less divine you see at present yes they are sleeping a time will come when they will also become awake we are all one samam sarveshu bhuteshu you see these are all the fragrance of a blossomed personality right loving everyone respecting everyone you see it is from this knowledge we have this namaskara namaha te is called namaste so how do we greet each other namaste i prostrate unto you i prostrate unto divinity in you see the beauty our greeting is not hello hi bye no 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 namaste prostrations unto the divine in you samas sarveshu bhuteshu so such a person mag bhaktim labhate param he gains the highest devotion so what are the lower categories of devotion a artha artarthi jitnyasu bhaktas they are the lower ones artha bhakta he goes to god because he has lot of problems in life that is called as artha bhakta hmm? a beggar devotee he doesn't want god he wants so many things from god he has lot of problems so he goes to god to solve his problems so they are the inferior devotees arthaarthi bhakta he need artha wealth lot of desires so therefore he goes to god so they are all the inferior categories of devotees what is a superior most category gnani what does he desire he says bhagwan i want you i don't want anything from you i want you now this gnani is a person who has become one so that's why mag bhaktim param bhaktim labhate see all these devotees are loving god there is love there there is devotion there but it is not para bhakti they are all apara bhakti this gnani attains para bhakti para bhakti means supreme devotion supreme love how did that love become supreme that love became supreme because now god is not some other entity away from me god is none other than the self in me the i the pure i in me the aham in me so how much is the distance from me to god there is no distance this is called oneness the moment you keep something away love also diminishes the more and more that thing becomes nearer love intensifies so what is the limit of love infinite love when should it happen when that beloved becomes one with me so this is why it is called para bhakti god is nearer than the very life breath we can say because he is the very self so with that bhakti bhaktiya mam abhijanati such a person knows me in reality yavan aham asmi yah cha aham asmi what am i who am i so two terms are used here yavan and yah yah means who am i yavan how much am i now why two terms are used so here bhagwan shankarachar says one term is to represent the saguna form of god so he knows the saguna aspect the other is a nirguna aspect so he knows both the saguna and the nirguna with attributes and without attributes both he knows 
with attribute means what sometimes god comes with form rama krishna etc he takes a form and enters into he knows that that's called a saguna then the other one is nirguna god by itself has no form he is formless he is nirguna attributeless it is exactly like once you have known water you are able to recognize water in the ice which has a form and also in normal water which has no form once you know water then you are not deluded by the form or the formlessness right so such a devotee who has known me he has known me completely because he has known the reality of me tattvata such a person vishate tadanantaram anantaram means what without antaram antaram means a time gap anantaram means what without a time gap immediately tattvato nyatva vishate knowing me he enters into me so the question is after knowing is there a time gap in entering <laughs> no anantara anantara means quickly immediately means actually both of them happen at the same time the moment he knows me he has become one with me that is the meaning exactly like in the dream the moment you know the waker you have become one with the waker both happen at the same time that is the meaning right knowing the waker itself is becoming the waker knowing the waker itself is renouncing the dreamer the moment the dreamer is dead waker is born so there is no time gap in the same way here also the moment you know me as a self you have become one with the self right now therefore arjuna your condition is not this so where should you start should you start from karma yoga or sanyasa now what is arjuna's this thing let me run away from this battlefield this is a terrible job which has been given full of dosham so what is the advice of arjuna sadosham api nyatyajet you must perform your duty because you have not reached this stage where you can effortlessly meditate and realize the self you have not reached here your step is this only karma is your level so therefore verse number 56 57 sarva karmanya pisada kurvano madvyapashrayah mat prasadad vapnoti shashvatam padam vyayam sarva karmanya pisada kurvano madvyapashrayah mat prasadad vapnoti शाश्वत पदम्यय चेतसाकर्माण मयि सन्न्य मत्पर बुद्धि मुपाश्रित्य मच्चि चेतसाकर्मा मयि सन्न्य मत्पर बुद्धि मुपाश्रित मच्चि सतत सो देर फोर अर्जुन वॉट आर यू सपोज टू डू अगेन भगवान इज समराइजिंग कर्म योग sarva karmani all your duties sada kurvana always doing it not escaping from it hmm? don't escape from your duties run away from your duties 
perform all your duties mat vyapashrayah depending on me holding on to me for my sake then what will happen mat prasadat by my grace apnoti you will attain shashvatam padam avyayam you will attain that imperishable state abod so what is this eternal shashvatam avyayam imperishable so what is that eternal imperishable state don't imagine that it is some world somewhere outside no it is not some world somewhere in the spatial location no 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 what is that state it is none other than consciousness in me by my grace you will attain that so perform your duties this is where you are now this is you know you are at that particular rung of that ladder so start from where you are perform this action a time will come when you will become fit for meditation and through that meditation you will reach me so therefore arjuna chetasa sarva karmani mai sanyasya renouncing all actions in me mat parah keeping me as the highest goal of life giving the highest priority to me living a god oriented life buddhi yogam upashritya so how should you do karma there should be buddhi buddhi means knowledge actions must be performed with right understanding then it becomes buddhi yoga karma yoga is called buddhi yoga because in karma yoga right understanding is there what are the dangers of action what are the benefits of action how actions can bind me how actions can purify me and liberate me there is right understanding therefore bhagwan sometimes calls karma yoga as buddhi yoga also in second chapter also you will find the same term used so buddhi yoga mu pasritya machittah satatam bhava may you always fix your mind upon me and perform your duty arjuna suppose you don't listen to me <laughs> that is also there so therefore arjuna now you have two options either listen to me or disobey me what will happen to you if you disobey me so two options now bhagwan is going to mention what will happen if you obey me what will happen if you disobey me so this topic comes next very interesting topic 58 59 60 machitta sarva durgani मत प्रसादात्तरिष्यसी अथ चेतमहंकारात न श्रोष्यसि विनंक्ष्यसि मच्चित्त सर्व दुर्गाणि मत प्रसादात्तरिष्यसि अथ चेत्वमहंकारात् न श्रोष्यसि विनंक्ष्यसि यदहंकारमाश्रित्य न योत्स्य इति मन्यसे मित् थेश व्यवसायस्ते प्रकृते स्वाम नियोक्ष्यते यदहंकारमाश्रित्य न योत्स्य इति मन्यसे मिथ्येश व्यवसायस्ते प्रकृते स्वाम नियोक्ष्यते स्वभावजेन कौंतेय निबद्धस्वेन कर्मण कर्तुं नेच्छसि यन्मोहात् 
करिष्यस्य वशोपित स्वभावजेन कौंतेय निबद्धस्वेन कर्मण कर्तुं नेच्छसि यन्मोहात करिष्यस्य वशोपित यस अर्जुन सो यू हैव टू ऑप्शन्स इन लाइफ वन इज ओबेमी द अदर इज डिसओबेमी बिकॉज नाउ द टीचिंग्स आर गिवन नाउ भगवान फोकस इज अपॉन द रिजल्ट यू हैव नॉट चॉइस आई दर यू कैन लिसन टू वॉट एवर आई से देन द कोर्स विल बी इन वन डायरेक्शन इफ यू लिसन टू मी द कोर्स विल बी वन इफ यू डोंट लिसन टू मी दैट ऑल्सो यू मस्ट नो मत चित्त इफ यू कीप युअर माइंड इन मी डू वॉट एवर आई हैव सेड परफॉर्मिंग ड्यूटीज as a worship of the lord etc then what will happen sarva durgani all difficulties problems challenges obstacles mat prasadat tarishasi by my my grace you shall overcome everything right whatever the difficulties come all the difficulties will just move aside and then by my grace you shall overcome all obstacles this is what will happen if you fix your mind upon me and act but athachet but if ahankarat out of ego out of arrogance nasoshyasi if you don't listen to me vinangshyasi you will perish right this is a second option not listening you just say no i don't feel that this knowledge is right i know what i, I don't want anyone to guide me i know <laughs> this is called ahankarat so if your life is vasana anusari and not shastra anusari if your life is not scripture based if your life is what you call vasana based hmm? desire based then what will happen vinangshyasi you will perish even i cannot help you <laughs> bhagwan is saying even i cannot help you choice is yours but anga arjuna let me tell you one more thing yat ahankaram ashritya holding on to your arrogance ego nayotsye iti manyase if you think i will not fight अर्जुन मिथ्या एष व्यवसाय ते एष व्यवसाय मिथ्या दिस रिजॉल्व ऑफ युअर्स दट ई विल नॉट फाइट मिथ्या इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू हैपन इट इज फॉल्स वै प्रकृति नियोक्षति युअर नेचर विल फोर्स यू टू फाइट इवन इफ यू से ई विल नॉट फाइट इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू हैपन Your nature is such. There is so much of rages in you that rages in you will force you to fight. You may say, "I will not fight, etc." But I know you cannot keep quiet. Swabhava je na kaunte ya nibadha swe na karma na. Every one of us, we are bound by our actions. We are bound by our nature, our vasanas. The vasanas will force us to perform action. So therefore. kartum na ichchasi en mohat now you are out of delusion you say that i don't want to fight etc karishyati avashopitat helplessly you will be performing these actions choicelessly because your nature is such it will force you now there is a question which may come here on one side bhagwan is saying Arjuna if you don't listen to me you will perish so what does it mean we have a choice choice of action isn't it if you disobey me if you don't listen to me you will perish means what there is swap prayatna self effort i may do i may not do this is what bhagwan is saying on one side on the other side bhagwan is saying you have no choice your nature will force you to do are you able to understand the contradiction here 
on one side bhagwan is saying you have a choice on the other side bhagwan is saying actually you have no choice now which is true how to understand this within a span of two verses contradiction has come atha chetto mahankarat na shroshyasi vinangshasi out of arrogance if you don't listen then you will perish what does it show there i have a choice to do or not to do but later on bhagwan says mithyesha vyavasayaste prakriti stvam niyokshati <laughs> your resolve that i will not fight your nature will force you to fight what does it mean there is choicelessness so this is where we have to analyze do we have a choice now see it is like this the truth is if i have a particular vasana this vasana will force me into action nobody can escape so if i have a rajasik vasana this rajasik vasana will make me do rajasik action i can't stop it because basically these vasanas will erupt as desires these desires will erupt as actions you can't stop it but i have a choice in what regard i can either perform selfish actions or i can perform selfless actions this choice i have let me give an example suppose i have violence as vasana right violence this violence if i don't direct this violence properly i can become a robber yes or no in robber also all the kshatriya gunas are there shauryam is there teja is there if you see the kshatriya gunas shaurya teja druti daksham yuddhe picha apalayanam all those things are there in a robber also you see veerappan <laughs> all these things you will find in him courage valor not running away from battlefield hmm? danam is there he used to give all the villagers lot of money and he used to keep them happy ishwara bhava is there he used to rule they are all kshatriya gunas if you find in veerappan it is there but what is the mistake he has done this guna he was not it was not directed it was not given a proper channel right kshatriya gunas are there it will express but what is the choice we have either we can give it the right direction so suppose this person with the kshatriya gunas he enters into army then what will happen vasanas are the same that violence tendency is the same but he uses that violence vasana for the welfare of the nation you see there also what he has to do he has to kill <laughs> are you able to understand what i am saying hmm? vasana will force you into action in that case you don't have a choice but there is one choice what is the choice whether to give these vasanas the right direction or the wrong direction this choice is ours right this is the best example violence was nice is there in me now my choice is either to become a robber with that vasana loot others plunder for selfish reasons or use this vasana to serve the country for selfless reason right direction that is my choice vasana expression i have no choice are you able to understand what i am saying in the same way business tendency it is there in my blood so wherever will i i go i will have you know i will do business but now that vaishya buddhi that business tendency i can do it selfishly and become a nirav modi or a harshad mehta <laughs> right or i can use this business tendencies and make my country financially strong by creating job opportunities etc right expression of vasana cannot be stopped but it can be given the right direction just like water flow you know flow of water cannot be stopped but 
you can direct it and then this what you call the flow of water which is flowing from mountains etc if you make this water pass through the fields etc then cultivation is there field is there crops are there anyway the water will go and merge in ocean you can't stop it but you can give right direction so we must understand where there is choicelessness and where there is choice expression of vasana there is no choice but giving direction to vasana there is a choice in the case of arjuna suppose let us assume he takes sanyas goes to some ashram joins as a brahmachari what will he do <laughs> violence vasana is there he will beat all the brahmacharis there for little little reason yes or no frustration is there in that war i should have fought but i don't know and he will beat all those poor brahmacharis the satvik ones you understand he will create problem if he goes to the ashram for little little reason he will create all problem why the vasana is there violence vasana is there are you able to understand so this is the point so arjuna therefore you remain in this field this is a right field for you to express your vasana make use of this field don't run away then it will be a sin then you are obstructing your progress in the field of spirituality allow those vasanas to get exhausted in the field every action will have some defect and as far as your duty is concerned the defect is you will have to kill sadosham api natyajet and every duty you will find that you know some kind of unrighteousness will happen you can't avoid there is nothing called 100% right action there is no such thing if your intention is good then that action is good we have to understand this what is your intention behind doing this action is it selfish or selfless if it is selfless for the welfare of all you are doing it so even though there will be some people who may get you know uh, what you indirectly negatively affected etc even then that action cannot be termed as bad action if the intention is good everything is good so two things number one we have to express our vasanas in that case there is no choice but where is the choice now the choice is how to express in which direction to express that choice is ours hmm. so whatever the vasanas you have express in such a way that you are also benefited and the society is also benefited use it creatively use it constructively this is the point continuing now bhagwan says in this world nobody has been given any choice now again a very controversial verse verse number 61 ईश्वर सर्वूताजुन ठति ब्राह्मयन सर्वूता यंत्रूढ़ा मया ईश्वर सर्वूता हृदयशेर्जुन ठति ब्राह्मयन सर्वूता यंत्रूढ़ा मया यश अर्जुन ईश्वर द लॉर्ड सर्वूता हृदेशे ठति the lord resides in the heart of everyone all beings the lord is there residing in the heart of everyone and what is he doing there sitting there mayaya sarvabhutani brahmayan he is making all these being run around with his maya and these beings are like yantraroodhani bhutani these beings are like you know placed on some machine yantra 
so when that yantra is rotating all the being sitting on the yantra is also going round and round hmm. is something like you know a puppet or some idol is kept and this there is something rotating so what happens to all these idols they also go <laughs> right so the lord seated in the heart he is brahmayan making all these being work hmm. with what maya with this power of maya so we are all puppets in the hands of the lord who is a puppeteer god is so he moves some fingers and the puppet they beat around their hands and legs so what is the problem with this verse <laughs> bhagwan do you mean there is no self effort so that means you are only doing everything so then all the criminal actions that are happening in the society you are the one poor criminal what can you do you inspired therefore he did all crime now this is one of the <laughs> major problem with this verse if god is a doer of everything then all the suffering in the society also is due to god only so now here we have to understand one thing right see so we will discuss two types of you know a people here so one is a pure hearted devotee what is his experience he is absolutely egoless what is his experience he clearly feels that everything is done by god only why in his own life he finds bhagwan the inspiration to do this noble act has come from you because how this inspiration is coming what is this i don't know body is given by you strength is given by you talents abilities are given by you these resources are given by you the environment is given by you so therefore the noble action which i am performing most important thing is inspiration i don't know how i am inspired how i am inspired to do this noble action so therefore you are the doer a pure hearted devotee a sattvic devotee has no doubt at all in this statement that bhagwan is a doer because he clearly knows that i am not doing anything inspiration has come from him the instruments of action it his the field is his he has created the right situation occasion and therefore action has been performed no problem do you have any problem if your heart is pure you also should not have any problem a sattvic person is living in light in light everything is clear remember sattva means light sattva means knowledge in the light of knowledge there is no problem problem is for whom problem is the more and more you go away from light what will happen the more and more you are embracing darkness in darkness problem starts coming confusion start coming and what is the main confusion so here the second category the impure hearted person hmm. impure hearted person now he will have two options one is the voice of god voice of conscience which is asking me to do the right thing the second is his own temptation born out of his vasanas his addictions because who is ruling him he is mainly ruled by the ego a pure hearted person is ruled by god because in his heart god is there an impure hearted person he is ruled by the ego so there are whims and fancies of the ego ego also dictate terms do this and generally the path is always adharmic unrighteous so now as far as an impure hearted person is concerned there are two vices what are the two vices the voice of adharma hmm, from ego and the voice to walk the path of dharma from god two vices hmm. now as far as this person is concerned he will have to exercise the right you know he is the one who has to decide now should i listen to the ego or should i listen to god there we say there is self effort because kartrutva bhava is strong sense of doership is strong so therefore 
we say there is self effort actually there is no self effort but this fellow feels as though i have to put self effort he feels it because he is in darkness in darkness there are so many delusory imaginations one such delusory imagination is i have to do if i don't do who will do sense of doership is strong greater the ego greater will be the sense of doership to such people who have great sense of doership you should always talk in the language of self effort because that is the only language you will understand are you able to understand what i am saying the more and more we are possessed by the ego the more and more there is sense of doership i am the doer that feeling is called kartrutva bhava sense of doership to such a person what is the advice to be given don't say everything is happening by grace of god and all that if you tell him then he will live according to his vasana and he will say god made me do to him you should say work hard self effort you have to put forth effort don't listen to the ego listen to this you know in fact he will not have that voice of conscience also very dim he will have <laughs> right so to the extent mind is pure we feel as though there is self effort now coming to this verse whether now he acts according to the dictates of his vasanas or whether he follows dharma one thing is for sure we are all bound by the laws of nature karma karma phala and the karma phala the fruits of action will be decided by the cosmic intelligence based on your intention based on your action etc we have no choice whatever actions we do that karma will come back as karma phala this is a law in that sense we are all the beings bound to this revolving machine we have no choice a sattvic person surrenders to god and perform action to please the lord no that is a particular karma so he should get the karma phala what is the karma phala liberation is the karma phala so based on the laws of action a sattvic person is liberated based on the very same laws of action a rajasic tamasic person is bound you see so in this way maya ya bhagwan says everyone revolves nobody is free yes it is true nobody is free we are bound by the laws of the universe there is a law of bondage there is a law of liberation you have to follow the law is this verse clear so what is self effort self effort is a delusory feeling born in an impure mind ruled by the ego self effort <laughs> is a delusory feeling born in a impure mind ruled by the ego so you will find that as the mind becomes pure and purer you will find that as the ego vanishes in that pure mind you find that you are naturally inspired to do good things dharmic things so then this devotee says where is this inspiration coming from he says this inspiration is from god god has inspired me therefore i did it it is exactly like a piece of iron attracted by the magnet a huge magnet is there and an iron piece is also kept now you are seeing that this iron piece is running towards the magnet so what will you see the iron piece is doing the job it is a self effort of the iron piece but what is the truth iron piece is not doing any effort all the effort is from the magnet it is a magnet which is attracting what is this iron piece doing it is doing nothing are you able to understand there is no self effort there but the seer feels as though the iron piece has done self effort to run towards the magnet but suppose this magnet is covered with i mean this iron piece is covered with rust or mud etc then there is resistance 
it is not moving or it is moving little 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 <laughs> that is because you have obstructed the grace then there are two options either the iron piece will move or it may not move two options come are you able to understand so as the mind becomes pure the ego goes kartrutva bhava goes the feeling that i am the doer goes the importance of self effort goes because everything starts happening naturally just like the water is flowing down 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 it is natural there is no effort there so a pure hearted satvik person effortlessly does good actions and even when he does good actions there is no sense of do worship he will never feel that i am the doer no things are happening through me i am only an instrument god is the doer this is a perfect understanding and that is what is mentioned here ishwara sarvabhutana hrudeshe tishthati a pure hearted person clearly experience that i am like a puppet mounted on the machine and the machine is rotating i am rotating i am doing things which bhagwan is asking me to do very clearly understands okay shall we proceed forward <laughs> so therefore this being the truth once again bhagwan summarizes the teaching verse number 62 tame vasharanam gacha सर्वभावेन भारत तत्प्रसादात्परा शाति स्थान प्राप्सि शाश्वत तमे शरण गच्छ सर्वभावेन भारत तत्प्रसादात्परा शाति स्थान प्राप्स शाश्वत दे फोर अर्जुन दि एसेंस ऑफ ऑल टीचिंग इज तमे शरण गच्छ टेक रेफ्यूज इन हिम अलोन सर्वभावेन होल हार्टेडली होल हार्टेडली सरेंडर ऑन टू दैट सुप्रीम लॉर्ड prasadat by his grace param shanti you will attain absolute peace supreme peace and shashvatam sthanam prapsasi you will attain that eternal state of perfection of peace happiness this is what you have to do surrender unto him this is the message this is all you need to do in life arjuna have you listened to me have you understood see the next verse ज्ञानख्या गुह्यागुह्यतर मृशेतदशेषेण यथेच्छसी तथा कुरु ज्ञानख्या गुह्यागुह्यतर मैया विमृशेतदशेषेण यथेच्छसी तथा कुरु अर्जुन ते ज्ञान आख्या ई हेव नौ गिवन नॉलेज हेव गिवन whatever you should understand the entire spiritual knowledge has been given to you and what is the nature of this knowledge guhyat guhyataram it is the greatest secret right guhyat guhyataram means what guhyatamam the greatest secret in this world the secret among all secrets So what is this great secret God is not somewhere out he is right there in our heart he is there as the very self the very i this is the secret put in another words all these people in this world they are running around for happiness isn't it they are going out in search of happiness but actually where is happiness 
right here in your own heart your very nature is happiness you don't have to seek it outside the fire need not seek heat from outside the sugar need not seek sweetness from outside it is its nature in the same way we need not seek happiness peace security joy from outside it is our nature but we don't know this so therefore we are running around in the world birth after birth life after life from one body to another body from one world to another world see the misery all because we don't know so what is the most important thing knowledge so therefore bhagwan says this great knowledge arjuna i have given you so therefore vimrishya etat think over it reflect upon what i have said asheshena completely thoroughly reflect upon it contemplate upon this knowledge given to you and then yathaichasi tatha kuru then you take your decision i leave it to you do as you like right knowledge has been given freedom has been given it is your life now you choose yathe ichasi tatha kuru then what happens something happens <laughs> a very touching thing happens that touching thing we will see tomorrow <laughs> as they say icing on the cake we'll put that ice tomorrow <laughs> let the ice remain in the fridge for some time shankar guru jay shankar guru shankar guru shankar bhagavat pad shankar guru शंकर गुरो जय शंकर गुरो शंकर भगवत पाद शंकर गुरो शंकर गुरो शंकर गुरो शंकर भगवत पाद शंकर गुरो अपार महिमा गुरुनाथ पार कृपा सागरा गुरुनाथ गुरु था जय गुरु नाथा सदगुरु नाथा गुरु 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 सदगुरु नाथ गुरु नाथ दीन दयालो गुरु नाथ दीन परिपूर्ण 
कृपालो गुरुनाथ परिपूर्ण गुरुनाथ जय गुरुनाथ सदगुरुनाथ गुरुनाथ 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 सदगुरुनाथ गुरुनाथ शंकर गुरु जय शंकर गुरु शंकर गुरु शंकर भगवत पाद शंकर गुरु शंकर भगवत पाद शंकर गुरु ओम सर्वे भवंत सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामयाह सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यंतु मा कश्चि दुख भाग भवे असतो मा सद्गमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्युर्मा अमृतम गमय ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम